Hi, my name is Dr. Ward. I want to welcome you to another video segment of the RedoxDoc.com video conference series. This lecture is about vitamin B12 deficiency and the redox implications in our health. And i um, got some research to share with you as well as kind of how this vitamin works in our body and expresses itself. And I've got some ideas and redox solutions. So let's just kind of get started. So vitamin B12 is one of the eight B vitamins that's essential to our health. We do not synthesize this in any way. Neither does any plant or any other microorganisms except bacteria. They can make their own B12, but we have to get it from nature. So B12 is called cobalamin and it's a water soluble vitamin, which means it's fairly safe. Uh, even if you were to take large amounts as a supplement, it goes through our body in a uh, water soluble manner and is excreted easily as opposed to some of the fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K, which are um, prone to accumulate if you take too much. So you have to be careful of those. So the key role of this essential vitamin is in brain function and red blood cell formation. And in the brain function, it's very uh, critical in the production of what's called myelin. Myelin is the main component of the sheath that goes around our nerve cells and it protects them from the environment and toxins and allows them to uh, sort of creates like an insulator for our nerve cells to conduct electricity. Without myelin, our whole nervous system breaks down. So that's why B12 is such an important component. It's also a big deal when it comes to making red blood cells. And so if you are deficient in vitamin B12, your red blood cells become very large and very misshapen, and they just don't do their work of transmitting oxygen well. So we've, we become lethargic and tired. Vitamin B12 is also a critical piece in DNA synthesis, fatty acid metabolism, and amino acid metabolism. All of these are a big, big deal in our nervous system. So <clears throat> vitamin B12 is normally absorbed in our stomach. And the way it works is, as we take in food vitamin B12, it is uh, converted into an absorbable form by the production of something called intrinsic factor. It's a coenzyme. And the intrinsic factor is produced in the stomach acid cells called parietal cells. So as we get older, it turns out our parietal cells don't secrete acid as well. And so we don't absorb B12 as well. So after the age of 60, pretty old, I'm, I'm over 60, um, you can have a drop off in the production of this cofactor and the ability to absorb vitamin B12. So it's worth looking into if you have problems with your blood counts or problems with fatigue. So um, the other thing that vitamin B12 is involved with as a, uh, a substrate in cellular reactions that make neurotransmitters. So we think with certain chemicals called neurotransmitters like serotonin, norepinephrine, things like that. Those are our chemical thinking um, molecules. And we, we actually don't produce them properly if we don't have vitamin B12. So it's all kind of like centering around our neurological systems and our red blood cell formation. So it turns out that when you, you are taking in about two micrograms to four micrograms a day, you're doing fine. But what's interesting is that if you are a vegetarian, you may not find uh, much B12 in your diet unless you take a supplement. So if you're uh, under 60 and making plenty of, of acid in your stomach, um, you're going to absorb B12 as a vitamin, as a tablet. You don't have to have a sublingual or an injection. But as we get a little older, the injection works better. And if we have certain stomach conditions, it works better too if you need it. Um, B12 is fortified in foods, kind of like vitamin D is in milk. Um, vitamin B12 is put in cereals, and, uh, you know, like cereals that, you know, Cap'n Crunch, things like that. Um, energy bars and in nutritional yeast, they fortify that with B12. What about the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency? They include fatigue, depression, uh, memory problems and headaches. Uh, people often become anemic because they're not making red blood cells. And the anemia is a megaloblastic or large red blood cell anemia. Um, 
folic acid and B12 are usually kind of connected in that. So, um, so that's B12, how, does it, how it works in our body and, and how are the symptoms of a deficiency. So there was a wonderful research article that I found um, in um, Redox Biology in, in this year's publication in April. And they um, did a study to see if there really is a connection between redox biology and vitamin B12 deficiency. Is, that, is this the mechanism that the deficiency of B12 is involved with in affecting our brain function? And it turns out it was proven to be true. So in, in vitamin B12 deficiency, the result of that is what's called a severe oxidative stress environment. And this study studied worms, what are called round worms, and they share uh, many genetic connections to us and our biology, interestingly. But um, so th these round worms were very useful in the study because they reproduce quickly and they could study many generations and the impact on that. So in a B12 deficient environment for these round worms, they noticed that there was an increase in cellular oxidants like peroxide, nitrous oxide, and a decrease in the enzymes like superoxide dismutase and glutathione. The result was a 50% change in the oxidative stress or the redox potential of these poor little worms. And um, so it kind of proved that the mechanism of action that was very reproducible in B12 deficiency, the impact on the biology of these worms was all revolving about oxidative stress. So um, it's kind of an interesting way of knowing it's not just uh, the absence of this, but what is the mechanism of action appears to be all about redox chemistry. And we've, we've really not known this. Um, it's only now that we're starting to get the beginnings of understanding. So what are some solutions? So if you have a B12 deficiency or you'd like to prevent it, what can you do to, to help yourself? The answer is this. Number one, you want to have a broad-based diet. So there's no one diet measure that is exactly uh, the best. But I will tell you that our biology is designed um, around having a healthy microbiome, this bacterial world that lives within our intestinal tract. And the back, it's kind of like you're a farmer. To be really healthy, you need to have a nice farm full of a broad-based balance of bacteria and a lot of them. So diverse and plentiful. You do that by having a broad-based diet. So um, foods that grow the healthy bacteria for us revolve around um, foods like vegetables, fruits, lean meats, dairy, and uh, nuts and oils um, and eggs. Those are all healthy foods to grow the right bacteria. Some people have trouble with dairy and meats. It's okay. Um, you can fortify yourself with B12 other sources but that's gonna grow good bacteria. The foods that don't revolve around um, starch, sugar, and, and wheat products like bread. Okay, so broad-based diet, check. Next thing is hydration, why? Well, when we have a lot of water in our body, one of the places that's very much affected is our stomach and our digestive tract. These parietal cells that produce acid produce a more a bigger volume of acid when you're well hydrated. So the idea is to drink plenty of water, check, between meals. And so when you sit down to eat, your stomach lining is well enriched with water. And when you secrete acid, you secrete a lot of, of volume and the, the acid itself is not so acidic, but you got a lot of it. So that acid is going to go around and look for the precursor B12 in your food and convert it into an absorbable form. So the more uh, volume of acid um, that you produce in your stomach, the less concentrated it is and more penetrating it is, okay? So hydration, big deal. The third thing uh, that I'm a great believer in is a redox supplement. So when we drink a redox supplement, it is it has a way of bathing our cells in our body with little redox molecules that help to restore cellular function. And so uh, the list of things that happen include supporting the health of the bacteria. They love these little molecules. It improves cellular transcription. In other words, 
the production of certain proteins that cells have to do to uh, do their job. It's like a copy machine. Uh, the DNA copies itself and it produces proteins. So the copy machine works well and neurotransmitter synthesis works well. And the whole neurobiology of our body starts to work well. So we know that our nervous system is critical in our body systems. You can't chop your head off and have a healthy, healthy body. It requires direction. And so the cellular directions that our nervous system gives to our body is critical. So if this was a nerve cell right here, and here's the nucleus, and here's the cell membrane, if that cell has a buildup of toxins and oxidants from metabolism, those are little positive molecules that I've got in my cell here, and only a few of the reductants that are present, this cell has oxidative stress. And it might just sit there and live, but not do its work, producing a neurotransmitter or doing some amino acid metabolism. It's just sitting there because it's stressed from oxidative stress. So when we bathe our body in a redox supplement, we replenish these molecules and restore homeostasis. And all of a sudden the cell goes, I'm feeling better. I'm going to do my job. And so at, in a nerve cell, this is critical because Nerve cells um, don't repair themselves very quickly. And so the idea is never to let them get out of balance. Help them stay in balance because once they're sick, they take a long time to fix themselves or they don't fix themselves at, as, at all well. And that was one of the concerns in this worm study is that some of these, um, some of the cellular damage was, was thought to be nearly permanent when you have severe drop in, in B12 function. So I hope that's been helpful in um, helping you gather some insight into vitamin B12 deficiency. Um, and in the medical world, uh, if you have a vitamin B12 deficiency, oftentimes what's done is to just give you an injection of vitamin B12 as a shot, which is fine and good. But wouldn't it be great as we age to age in balance and avoid this kind of problem? And I think that's what these little redox solutions can do for you. Alrighty, we'll see you at the next class. Have a good day.